Welcome back. Personality Conflicts, Part 3, The Golden Retriever. I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service, your family and consumer science agent. For our series this month, we are talking about personality types and maybe some communication tips on how you can have more positive interactions with the people around you because it's beneficial to your mental health as well as the success of what you do maybe as a family or within your job or even organizations that you work with. So we've been talking a little bit about four basic personality types. Most things you see will be divided into four quadrants for personalities and preferences. And so it just makes it an easy way to remember there's all kinds of things out there I've mentioned before. You can take assessments, you can go through really scientific, hardcore things to figure out where you fall across that personality spectrum. For the purpose of what we're doing, kind of fun, a little bit of educational, just to get you thinking about how you interact with others, you get to self-identify for this one. So we've talked about the rooster, those leaders who are out there, they're very direct uh, we've, and assertive. We've talked about the raccoon, those fun-filled visionary people who are really outgoing. Today, we're going to talk about the golden retriever and give you some characteristics and some tips on how to work with them. So we've talked, obviously, the rooster and the raccoon, very different in how they approach things. You may have characteristics from some of all of these. You may have one that you're like, that's not like me at all, uh, but that's like my child or my spouse or this person I'm working with. Uh, or a colleague or a, someone on a committee in an organization that they just drive me crazy because I'm not like that at all. And it's hard for me to understand. So anytime we talk about personalities, we need to consider perspective. That's what comes back to making that communication positive. So like we did last time, we have an optical illusion here in the middle of your screen. And this one, again, one I've seen a hundred times, but you have to really kind of focus and see which way you look at the picture. So one way you see a young woman with her head kind of to the side, kind of the side of her, the profile of her face, and then um, some feathers coming off and maybe a like a scarf off the back of her hair and a, a nice fur stole and a pretty little necklace across there. But if you turn it the other way, kind of looking down, and again, mostly profile, but looking down a little more full over, you see an older woman who's got, you know, the the more wrinkle around the eyes and uh, her nose is coming down and where that necklace was on your young lady now is the mouth. So it's how you turn and how you look. Again, sometimes if people see whatever they see first is what they will always see first. Some people may never be able to see both pictures. It just is a block and they can't see it that way. Communication works the same way when you don't understand where they're coming from or why they would push it that way. Now, understand our basic personality preferences, then we get trained. We learn certain behaviors and how to, to work with others and get along. We have things happen in our life, maybe traumatic things, maybe just really good things that affect our perspective on what we're approaching. So these are just some basic overarching communication uh, preferences and personality profiles for you to start thinking about how you interact with other people working in a group as a team. So like I said, it's very beneficial to your mental health to understand what's going on around you. As we've talked with the other types, you're, there's some things you'll go, well, that's just negative. That's not a good thing. We don't like that. That's not the case. There are a lot of really positive things and characteristics that maybe in one case we're thinking it's not the best thing and in, in the next situation is exactly what we need. So it's important that we have all of these types of personalities in working through any project, anything that we have to do. So in looking at a golden retriever, if you fall into this category, now these are people who are extremely loyal. They can be very sensitive about what's going on around them. They're sensitive to others as well as their own emotions. They're very thoughtful. This is the person in the group who's going to be the hospitality chair and always send the cards and get that information out um, to others if they're going to send the flowers, if someone's sick. Uh, they do like schedules now because they 
they are sensitive to things that are going on around them and they want to be thoughtful of other people's time and their own time. So they like to have a schedule and know what's going on. So they're very natural planners because of that. They don't really like to be rushed. So it's great if you've got retrievers, they're going to be the ones to put that schedule in place to get the plan going, but you're not going to want to drop it on them the day before or the hour before. And that's not to say, again, we can be trained to do a lot of things that they can't adapt and adjust in those situations, but it's not going to be their preference and the way they work the best because they also value those relationships. And so it, part of that being loyal is having that mutual respect. And knowing that that relationship is just as important to them as whatever task has been assigned. Now, because of that, sometimes it can be easy to offend them. So you can see when we talked about the rooster being very direct and how they say things, it can be really rough if they're dealing with a retriever. They're going to really have to think about if they want that to be a positive interaction, not to be quite so easily offended. And same side, if you're the... Um, the retriever, maybe you have to, to take a step back and really consider, is that just their personality type? Was that really a personal thing? These retrievers tend to act as the peacemaker in situations. They want to preserve the relationships. They want people to get along. And they're very nurturing. They're very caring to everyone around them. So again, just a general blessing to have these people on your team. But if you're someone who's not comfortable dealing with emotions and being nurtured, it can also be a struggle. Again, anytime you're in these situations, the only person you have control over is you. So you have to be the one to step back and think, okay, how does this fit? How does my personality type interact with theirs to have a positive interaction and come out on the other side of that with a good result? So just another reminder, we've talked about that your, your books, your movies, TV shows, things are going to typically center around having those four basic types of characters to make it interesting, to keep the dynamics moving, to keep the storylines moving forward and have things happen. They may exhibit a little bit of the different ones over time, which is true to life. That's what most of us do in different situations. We may respond as whichever type fits us the best in that moment. But having those four types helps us get an understanding of the dynamics and how things work because it, again, it creates some conflict, gives that little story bit there. Uh, so your retriever is going to be that person. Sometimes it's the mom, family member. Sometimes it's the dad. Maybe it's one of the kids, but it's that nurturing person who's always loyal, helps take care of the family, uh, keeps everybody kind of on schedule, getting their tasks done. So you can usually easily identify the retriever in any of those types of shows. So how do we deal with a retriever? I already mentioned sometimes retrievers and roosters, uh, retrievers are going to avoid a rooster because they don't feel comfortable in that situation or they, they may feel a little threatened or same thing. You know, they're going to sit back and watch that raccoon go out and be outgoing and do their thing and be a little more reserved back just taking care of their stuff. So how do we make that interaction a good one if we're working with a retriever. Well, first of all, be calm. Your retrievers do not respond well to raised voices or, uh, you know, just that tone of exasperation can be really difficult for them uh, and they can kind of shut down. Check in with them on what's going on and how are you doing? Like I said, they may sit back and let the roosters and the raccoons do all the talking and you may have to consciously say, hey, my retriever friend, what do you think about that? Or how would you like to address that? What do you want to do? So that they feel they have the opportunity to speak and they feel the val that they're valued in that. Consider the schedule. It's important. Remember, they really think the schedule is important. So you want to keep that going. You want to ask for their help, but not have it be at the last minute. So we mentioned before, and don't set them up for confrontation. When you know it's going to cause an issue or a problem, have those conversations ahead of time, maybe in private, to get things in the place where they need to be so that you're not sending them out to be blindsided. And watch for those subtle signs of what's going on. Uh, they may hide it sometimes in humor, a little sarcasm, but you'll start to see, okay, you know something's coming because retrievers don't anger quickly, 
But when they get to that point, it can be very volatile. So you want to kind of watch for that as it's coming up. So that's how we're going to think about our retrievers. So we've covered our roosters, our raccoons, and our retrievers. Next time, we're going to finish up with the owl. Again, I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service, your family and consumer science agent. This has been Personality Conflicts number three. I log on to our website, curryextension.nmsu.edu. Sign up for our newsletter. Ask us a question. We'd love to hear from you.